Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Hashtag Des caught it. As a Cowboys fan, and, and, and I'm sure many of us across the board um, have struggled internally with this, uh, this announcement from the competition committee that the, the catch from the 2015 playoff game against the Green Bay Packers uh, by Des Bryant was supposed to be, in fact, a catch. Uh, his and the, the Calvin Johnson one. I believe the season or two before, but um, this is this is very interesting news because I feel like in a lot of ways uh, that that play that catch um, meant a lot of different things for us um, from a Dallas Cowboys fan perspective and, and an organization perspective. Um, starting with Des Bryant, I think that catch psych psychologically, that non-catch that got ruled really uh, derailed him uh, moving forward from an emotional standpoint. He really hasn't been the same player since that playoff game. I know he had a lot of injuries in 2015 and some, some, sh and then 2016 he had trouble with his conditioning and whatnot and, and, and more injuries. And then last year, obviously we're now at the point where we're evaluating whether or not it's worth keeping him on our football team. And I, I draw a lot of that back to, um, that play. I mean, it, sometimes everybody has a breaking point and sometimes uh, things like that, you know, people never get over certain things. And I feel like Dez has never gotten over uh, that play. That, that That's a play where if you look at him down the road going into the Hall of Fame, that's a signature uh, Hall of Fame type play, especially if we hang on to win the game. And I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But um it really has affected him negatively. And I'm hoping now that this this information has come out, um, the NFL retroactively trying to right their wrong, even, even though nothing can come of it, other than us just being frustrated and reliving those memories again. Um, hopefully he can be at peace with it, knowing that he did make that play, he was correct, um, and move forward, you know, revitalize his career. Um, with the Cowboys. I am in the camp. I am firmly in the camp that Des Bryant um, needs to remain a Dallas Cowboy. I wasn't, you know, if you look at some of my videos, I wasn't as strong. I said he needed to be evaluated. Um, I've actually taken the time to go. Um, a lot of people have put out really great content from a film perspective, and I've really taken the time to go back and watch his film this year. He was by no means a great receiver, but to put all the blame and, and for him to shoulder all the blame is is ridiculous. Um, he had to deal with quarterback issues. Let's be real. He had to deal with a horrible offensive scheme and 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 and, and quite frankly, not being used um, in the best way possible. And then obviously, you know, a lot of it is on him. His attitude, the the focus drops. A lot of those things, but. Going back to that 2015 game, let's say they do rule it a catch. I think that the, the thing that a lot of, of fans, especially Cowboys fans, are missing is that there were still five minutes left in the game. It was fourth and two, and that was the last play we got to run offensively. That was the last. That was the last play of Tony. That was the last crack Tony Romo got. Right? Why is that? It's because of the defense. We never. I mean, if you really go back and look at that game. Five minutes to go, the, one of the reasons why I feel like Tony Romo felt the need to take a shot there is because he's assuming he's going to get another crack at it. You know, even if even if for what even if the ball's incomplete or whatever. I mean, they got the coverage they wanted. They got the look. Was, if they, there's an NFL Films video out there where you can kind of hear everybody mic'd up, include uh, mostly Des, but you you can hear them talking about on the sidelines where, where they when they get that man on coverage with Sham Seals, they're gonna take a shot, and that's what Tony saw. That's what Des saw, and they took a shot. But I say all that because five minutes left in the game, it's twenty six twenty one. Defense just needs to get a stop. You're playing against a quarterback at the time. Yes, Aaron. Rod it's Aaron Rodgers, but he was on one leg. He remember he had the hamstring uh, issue, and we never got them off the field. So when I think about that game, I don't just think about Dez's catch. I think about the Demarco, Demarco Murray fumble that could have flipped the game. Him running, you know, Julius Peppers makes an unbelievable play, but lack of ball security. I think about the Dan Bailey missed field goal right before half where we can increase our lead. We were playing very, very well. And, you know, he blew a field goal. 
I think about the third and 15 that Devontae Adams, no one ever gets him on the ground in our defense. I don't know if it was Barry Church or whoever, but a lot of people missed, and we lose the football game. Time runs out. We run out of time. We don't get off the field. So this narrative that we lost the game because of the Dez catch is a false one. Because if Dez catches in, I went, I, I played the if scenario. If he scores a touchdown there, let's say we go for two. Let's say we get it. So we're up 29-26, right? There's still... So you're telling me that with, with with five minutes left, Aaron Rodgers can't get his team in field goal range or a touchdown? Oh, by the way, we've seen this scenario play out before in 2016. Okay? That's the other thing. This organization got another crack at it in 2016 at home. Number one seed. Different cast of characters. Different quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott's in the mix. You're having a record-breaking season. You get up late in the game. And then you lose to Aaron Rodgers again because of the defense. Okay. Now in the in the 2014 game or 2015 game, we couldn't get we couldn't get any pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers threw for 320 yards and three touchdowns and no interceptions. I mean, on one leg. And you had guys out there running after him. Do you do you guys remember Ken Bishop? Do you guys remember Nick Hayden? Jeremy Mincy, that was our defensive line, by the way, guys. So if you guys think that we were going to uh, – uh, now, from a momentum is, is huge, and, I, and I, I, I'm with the people. I understand what people are saying. If we had scored a touchdown, that would have put a lot more pressure on, on Green Bay. Our guys defensively would have been riled up. But you have to get stops in, 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 in big moments. You saw in the Super Bowl, even when you got, get in these shootout games and, and, and it's back and forth, the Eagles, a big part of why they won the game, the strip sack by Brandon Graham on Tony on, on Tom Brady, excuse me, in the Super Bowl. Those are the type of plays you have to make in order to beat these guys. So, yes, the Des catch is a huge part of it. And the league admitted they were wrong. Hopefully, Des can move on. Hopefully, this fan base can move on. I'm tired of talking about this. Because, in my opinion, we got another crack at it in 2016. And we lost the same damn way. We lost with the defense not being able to get him off the field. They had a year, over a year to prepare for it, knowing that, hey, if we want to get to the Super Bowl, we need to go through number 12 in Green Bay. We need to figure out how to, how to, how to contain him to, to, to some degree. Hey, let's, and I remember saying, in, in, I even remember saying in 2015, hey, if we could play Green Bay at home, if we get a, that wasn't the solution. He carved us up in Dallas. So, the, the, the personnel issues, the, the, the schematic issues that we had defensively, that's why we lost that football game, in my opinion. All right? And, 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 and we have to let this dead stuff go. I'm glad that, they, you know, we've been set free to some degree of it, and, and hopefully we can move forward. But until you fix what actually lost you the game, and remember there were still five minutes left on the clock, then... You're living, you you know, you're you're dicing up what actually happened. You know, it, it's a, I can't even think right now with with the words I want to use because it's it's frustrating. It's frustrating um, that we're here having this this pity party or this conversation, um, and it's been a busy off season. The Jerry stuff, the, the, the deciding what we're gonna do with Des, um, and then obviously the the, the the draft stuff coming up, but. This, you know, yes, Des caught it. I get it. But you got to fix what's actually hurting you. And until they do that, we're not going to be any further than where we were in 2015 and where we were in that 2017 playoff loss. Those are my thoughts. You guys let me know in the comments what you think. Please like, share, and subscribe. We are trying to grow this channel. Um, and we'll be back with you guys with more content. Um, still working on the draft stuff, but that'll be out soon.